All right, here we have one more example. And again, what I want us to do is I want us to identify your zeros, identify your intercepts, and try to come up with a, a rough sketch of what this is going to look like. Now, before we just dive into all of that, let's talk about what this guy compares to in terms of the power function. So remember, the power function is where we're just kind of focus on the axis. So you have x here, you got that guy, this, and this. Uh, one of the things you also want to identify is that you've got a square right here. Okay, So f of x, in terms of what that first term is going to look like, is going to have this x squared times 3x times these other two factors of x. So altogether, he's going to look like 3 x to the 2, 3, 4, 5. So in the end behavior, this is what he's going to look like. Something that has an odd degree, which means he's going to be the cactus shape. The lead coefficient of 3 just means he's going to be kind of stretched out. But it's not going to turn the cactus upside down. He's still going to be maintaining where he's going down on the right, uh, on the left, he's going up on the right. Alright, so like we did in the last problem, let's identify the zeros. Okay. So the zeros, you have, well, this is kind of interesting. From this factor, x would equal negative 2. But notice that it has a power of 2 here, right? So I'm going to make a little note here that it's 2, but it has what we call a multiplicity of 2 because of that power of 2 that's on that factor. If I solve this guy equal to 0, I would get 1 third. This guy equal to zero gives me negative three, and this guy gives me negative two. Now in terms of the notes that we made for the last problem, we start off here and we said this. If it's a degree five, that means we would have five zeros. We would have up to five x-intercepts. And in terms of the turning points, okay, so it's degree 5. So degree 5 means we have 5 zeros, up to 5 x-intercepts, but turning points is n minus 1, so take 1 off. So you can have 4, but remember we can say we, said we could have or, or less than that by a multiple of 2. So 4, take 2 off, so you could have 2 you can still take two off, or you have zero turning points. So we don't necessarily know how many turning points we have, but the more zeros you have, the more turning points you're going to have. If you end up having a zero, I, I should say the more distinct zeros you have, the more turning points you're going to have. If this guy had been a multiplicity of, say, 4, that really starts to eliminate how many turning points you can have. We're going to see that here in just a second. So for our x-intercepts, we're going to turn each of these guys that are real into an x-intercept. So we have 2, 0. We have a third 0. Negative 3, 0, and we have negative 2, 0. Now, those are the x-intercepts, and those are pretty easy to pick off because we already have the zeros, and those guys were easy to get because we already had the factorization. The y-intercept, though. Remember that for every y-intercept, it's going to be 0, comma, something. And for us to figure out what that is, well, we just need to go and replace all of the x's with 0. If I plug in 0 here, I end up with negative 2 squared, so that's 4. 4 times 1 is negative 4. Times 3 is negative 12. Times 2 is negative 24. So by plugging in 0 into all those guys, and you see what you're left with, that's all going to multiply to give us negative 24. And now we're going to put everything together and try to come up with a, with a reasonable um, estimate for our graph. All right, so we've got negative 2 and negative 3, and we go all the way out to positive 2, like this. 
All right, so let's put our x-intercepts in place. All right, so we have two zero right here. We have one third zero, so it's gonna be somewhere right about there. Negative three zero and negative two zero. So go back to this guy where it's x to the fifth so we understand what the end behavior is going to be. The end behavior tells us that on the right, we're going up, and on the left, we're going down to maintain that cactus shape. Now, this is where you have to pay attention to multiplicities. So when you cross, or when you hit right here when uh, you have negative three, negative three for the x-intercept is right there. It came from that zero, which came from this factor. Now this was a factor to a power of one, which means it's a linear factor, which means if you were to zoom in on this, it's going to look like a line as you go through it. So it's gonna go like that. But we've got to curve back down and hit this guy. So this was negative three, this is negative two, and negative two was only there once. So you're gonna go through this guy. Now keep in mind that you have a y-intercept of uh, 0, negative 24, which is going to be somewhere down here. So this guy's going to dive down, and he's got to curve back up, because he eventually has to go through 1 3rd 0. Well now look what, something kind of weird happens here. This 1 3rd is only there one time, so he's still gonna go through this like a line. That means if you can like zoom in on that guy, you're gonna see it looks just like a line. But right here when x equals two, and this is where this multiplicity of two comes in. It's not because that's a two. It's because it comes from a power of two on that factor. And what it's going to do is that it's gonna come back down here and it's going to bounce off, okay? And when it bounces off, if you can just uh, imagine, you can kind of zoom in right here. And if you can block everything else out of the way, you see something that looks like a parabola. It bounces like a parabola because the factor that contributes and gives us two is a squared factor. So when you zoom in, he looks like a, uh, like a square, like a parabola. If you zoom in on these guys right here that were linear, it looks, I know it's not, but it kind of looks like it's a line as it goes through that x-intercept. Same thing here. If you could zoom in there or zoom in here, it looks like it's a line as opposed to something that bounces off like a parabola. And that's the difference between having a multiplicity of one where you just go through it like a line and a multiplicity of two where you bounce off like a parabola. Okay, so let's kick it over to Desmos so we can see what this guy looks like. And you see that's pretty close to what we have. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. You see that we are bouncing right here when x is equal to two. He goes up and away to the right, he goes down to the left. Now, we said that we could have four, two, or zero turning points, so let's count them. As I trace from left to right, there is one turning point here, and I start to go down. Then I turn to go up, so that's the second turning point. You turn to go down, so that's the third turning point you turn to go up, so you have four turning points as indicated here on the screen. One, two, three, four turning points, okay? So we could have had four. It's also possible that this could have been, since it was degree five, we could have just had two turning points, or even we could have had zero turning points, okay? Now, in the next video, we're gonna swap things around. Instead of giving you a function and you coming up with it with a sketch like we have here, I'm going to give you the graph. And it's going to be up to you to tell me what is the function that gives us that graph.